I wanted to have my own web series, so here it is. I like her, I like her, I like her so much. I like her, I like her, I just want to touch her boobs, I mean her heart. Yes, that's a better place to start. deny all this passion I feel. I feel like I could burst. Maybe I should get to know her first. Fuck, I'm stuck in this anxious days, trying to abstain from mundane cliches. Like, I like her, I like her, I like her a lot. What can I do with these feelings I got? Ship them overseas, maybe to Antarctica to freeze. Please, oh please, let her like me too. Not knowing is going to make me blue. I like her, I like her, I like her, okay. It is not healthy to go on this way, but I do just the same, although I don't know her last name. But I like her, I like her, I like her, I like her, I like her. So one thing that happens when I'm single is, when I meet a new girl, I ask myself, do I want to have sex with her? And if the answer is yes, the next question becomes, how can I optimize my chances of having sex with her? But unfortunately, you don't know what a girl is really interested in you for, so one of my friends suggested I tried online dating, where you at least know the girl is interested in something. So I did a quickie session on Match.com, and I perused 1,000 girls, and I liked one. She was an actress, but she claimed to be trauma-free, and she said her last relationship had ended because of religious differences, and well, I've been there, done that, oi, so I thought, why not? But rather than waste $29.99 to join Match.com, I instead opted to find her on the Facebook, which was really easy to do because she gave her name, age, and school. I found her in 10 seconds through mutual friends, and I'm about to write her, and one of my friends screams at me, No! You can't possibly write a girl you found on Match.com on the Facebook! No! That is a huge breach of protocol! No! It is inappropriate, disrespectful, and just plain wrong, and... I thought, well, fuck it, if a girl really cares about this sort of thing, I'm probably not compatible with her anyway. But before I did write her, I did check out her entire webpage and I read her entire blog because I'm very thorough and I found out she was verbose, loquacious, and poetic just like me and I thought, this actually has serious potential. So I drafted a really sweet, cute, short note on the Facebook which basically said, first I apologize for this breach of protocol, but then I went into, you know, you sound really cool, I thought we might get along, and then I ended with, well, feel free to respond to this, or ignore it, and we'll take it from there, and uh, she chose to ignore it. So I think the lesson here is, if you want a girl to take you seriously, pay the $30 and join the dating site. One thing I hate about being single is you have to leave your apartment more, and yes, I know there is life outside your apartment. I hope I don't have to pay for that since I just sang that. But I'm more of a, a Scrabble playing homebody. I like to go out to dinner or to shows or to concerts or movies or whatever, but I'm not really much of a bar club or drinker type person. But I did get invited to a birthday party, and even though it was pretty far downtown, I thought I should probably go to this. But before I committed, I did what most people do, and I pre-stocked the girls who had said yes on the Facebook invite just to make sure there were cute girls going. and. There were definitely some cute girls going, but unfortunately, or fortunately for them, their privacy settings were pretty high. I could not really see much of their profiles, but there was one girl who had a clip to a YouTube video, which turned out to be The Muppet Show, and I just got so excited about that because I just adore The Muppets. They've been such a huge influence on my life. I practically am a Muppet, so I took the stalking to the next level, and I Googled her, and... I was able to see her entire LinkedIn page, and I was just so impressed by her resume. She is so intelligent and multi-talented, and 
I thought I would totally hire you to be my girlfriend. So I was thinking all week of ways that I could kind of bring the Muppets up in a conversation that she could overhear and run over and proclaim, you like the Muppets? I like the Muppets! Instant connection. And I got to the party relatively early and staked out a spot right by the door so that I could watch all the girls coming in to make sure I would not miss her. But after about four hours, I came to the realization that she totally stood me up. Though... I'm not sure you can call it standing up if the other person doesn't know you exist and doesn't know you're waiting for them. But the lesson here is don't get too excited about a girl before you actually meet her. So this next girl I actually met, which is a step in the right direction, I had mentioned during my showcase I was going down to DC for Jon Stewart's rally to restore sanity, and she came up to me after the show to say that she was taking the free bus as well, and we talked for a few minutes and decided that we would combine our friends and go down to DC together, and I was totally ready to go home and collapse because I'm really exhausted after a show, but she seemed like she wanted to talk, so we ended up talking for three whole hours, alright, two hours and forty minutes, but it was just magical. There were sparks going. What a connection. She shared my tastes in all five of my conversation topics. Politics, books, movies, theater, and music. It was it was incredible. And there was a lot of hand touching going on and a great hug goodbye. And I ran home skipping and singing, I met a girl. So Saturday rolls around and it's 5.30 a.m. and we're all really sleep deprived and freezing and in this queue that's lined in British of 15,000 people all to head down to DC and my first clue that she wasn't as interested in me anymore should have been when she said well we don't need to sit on the bus together because we're just gonna nap the entire way there anyway and yes we did sleep the entire way down to DC but I was kinda looking forward to sleeping together so we got to the rally two hours late and it's extraordinarily crowded and we're all jam-packed like sardines which was the most action I got in six weeks so at least there's something but after the rally we split up to see separate groups of friends but as fate would have it we ended up on the same bus back to the city together and she got on the bus and I texted her and I was all like haha you totally just got on our bus and she wrote back haha wow and then I responded sadly I'm too far away to throw spitballs at you which I thought was both cute and endearing but no response and then five hours later we get to the city and she gets off the bus and doesn't wait to say goodbye, doesn't even wave or anything, and yes, my feelings were a little hurt, but I was willing to give her the benefit of the doubt because we had such an amazing connection on Tuesday night, so I waited a few days and then I called to ask her out and I left a really succinct message, which is really hard for me because I like to talk a lot, but I just wanted to get in and out of there as quickly as possible. That's what he said. Anyway, she did not respond to my phone call, so the lesson here is a three-hour conversation does not a lasting connection make. So the moral of this week's episode is I need to get to a place of insouciance about dating where it's not so much of a burden but more of an adventure and I really need to work on letting go of dead-end connections much faster. So thank you for tuning in to this episode of Everyday Little Seth. And I hope to see you back at episode two, Fuck Friends. I wanted to have my own.